space are probably the most complex type of spatial temporal data because uh, they are the uh, order sequences of geospatial locations and timestamps of moving objects um, over space and time, such as uh, GPS trajectories of a fleet of taxi or um, trajectories of a mass, um, you know, a massive movement of, of people over uh, urban space. So um, a lot of these real-world problems in urban environments are a mixture of different data types, which make these problems even more complex. Uh, and hence, there are certain methods like cross-domain data fusion and stuff to combine these into uh, one unifying data. Um, so, so for example, like uh, if you look at a broad traffic prediction, you have the, the infrastructure, the road network. They have their own sort of static um, static properties like you know fixed number of lanes, the speed limit, um, and etc. So the you know bridge type and road type and highway type. Uh, but at the same time, you have dynamic features like the, the cars traveling through them. Uh, so the the speed changes with time and throughout the rhythms of the day. And uh, also the same thing for incident prediction. You have the boundary of the neighborhood, uh, the number of buildings in that, the types of the district. Is it a commercial district? Is it a neighborhood, uh, a residential neighborhood? And you have the population dynamics going on in that neighborhood. Um, at the same time, you have the, the incidence type that changes with day and night, also with the seasons. And uh, trajectory prediction is probably uh, the most complex one that you have. You're moving people, the group dynamics, whether individual is moving alone or with a group of people, <laughs> uh, so weekday, weekend patterns, and et cetera. So it's, uh, it gets more and more complex. And, uh, and therefore, in this talk alone, I uh, will be able to only uh, talk in detail the two problems, traffic speed prediction and uh, crime incident prediction. Uh, due to their relate relatedness and uh, also somewhat uh, being more simple than trajectory prediction. So the first problem is how do you go about predicting fine grain traffic speed over a, um, a big complex network of road networks um, uh, in, in the most uh, extensive, place, spati uh, ex extensive way spatially and also in you know, how, how, how do you predict uh, ahead of time in five, ten minutes ahead of time? So if you want to route a fleet of autonomous vehicles. So, um, so the problem uh, is I got a lot of data from um, Uber. Uh, I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 2015 uh, doing my internship. So from the data, we have uh, sensor readings in certain, if you look at this little figure, so this is the location of the sensors of certain uh, road segments at uh, every five minute snapshots. So the problem is how do you go about infer uh, to the whole network the distribution of the speed um, to the whole network because uh, you can't uh, practically place sensors everywhere and how do you go about inferring in uh, you know a few minutes ahead of time so that you can even plan for your fleet of autonomous taxis, so to say, how to you know, um, optimize for the speed and how to do real-time speed prediction. Um, so that's a problem, spatial temporal uh, inference. So, um, so for, for the problem, I uh, employed a method called Gaussian process, which is basically a, a non-linear prediction uh, or interpolation, if you will, uh, that um, takes advantage of uh, the property of being spatially uh, correlated uh, of these sensors because obviously if you look at the road network, so you know, speed over one particular road segment will be influenced by the, the incoming flow of the traffic through the other branches of the network. And so not, not every other edges in the crab would have the same influence. So that the spatial influence, also the temporal influence uh, at what time in the day and you know, the certain events that might fit into the network effect. So, as, um, so Gaussian process has certain advantages of being able to model the complex behaviors uh, that are uh, spatial, uh, spa spatial temporary correlated over space and time. Um, so 
that's the main advantage of uh, Gaussian process. So in short, as I said, it's a, long, it's a nonlinear regression technique that encapsulates the uh, concept of closeness in space and time by uh, kernel functions, which can further use to you know, incorporate features, static features, such as infrastructure, etc. At the same time, it's also a Bayesian method. Now, I don't want to go deep into all this stuff because, you know, it's um, a bit too technical. But, I mean, uh, briefly speaking, you can do Bayesian inference on GPs or do Bayesian updates without retraining the whole model because um, training is expensive. If you knew something's happening, you can update the parameter in a Bayesian inference fashion, which can be much faster than retraining everything in light of new evidence of your new data, new event, etc. So that's the main advantage. Now, I'm not going to scare you off with this, um, but this is just to say that you are able to use kernel functions in uh, Gaussian processes to capture the complexity of the network, uh, of the directedness of the graph, of the spatial temporal correlation of the graph of the network structure. Um, at the same time, you can also incorporate static features of the, uh, of, of the infrastructure uh, using this, this particular kernel method, um, so without going further into it. And um, we were able to um, evaluate the proposed method uh, of uh, what we call the um, local Gaussian process, which you know, something more, uh, more, more complex, but essentially it's the Gaussian process on clustered uh, uh, road segments over space and time. So we were able to do inference over the whole network at different time, time steps in the future and we were able to evaluate with uh, st you know, state-of-the-art alternatives and we were sh able to show that our error rate is among the most competitive with uh, pretty good performance and um, you know, when you cross validate with the actual data. So the results were published in a, a IEEE journal last year, um, in the Journal of Big Data, a special issue on urban computing. So that's the first problem. Second problem is um, uh, crime incident prediction in, um, for urban law enforcement, uh, which is a uh, consultation work um, between me and my advisor back then for a um, national law enforcement agency here in Singapore. So um, crimes is an obvious uh, effect of urbanization and population growth because uh, as population density increases, you have more people moving in certain neighborhoods and therefore increases incidents and uh, certainly puts a lot of sh uh, stress and strain on the uh, local law enforcement agencies. So, so the challenge is how to guarantee the quality of service, the quality of law enforcement service um, in light of these uh, uh, trends or, you know, of uh, r rising demands and this you know, um, urbanization trend. And, um, and for the problem, we were, uh, we, we were provided with large-scale database of crime incidents that provide five grand details of when, when incident happened, the context, description. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big database from uh, National Law Enforcement Singapore. Uh, so therefore, it was able to make high precision, high fidelity prediction of crime incidents using machine learning with pretty much the same technique. Um, so as I said before, um, the law enforcement problem wants to guarantee it at any uh, time, at, uh, any point in time, at any neighborhood, at any uh, sort of defined neighborhood where you have a certain um, uh, manpower resource, like number of cars, how do you guarantee no more than alpha, uh, alpha fraction of the instance cannot be responded within 15 minutes time. So that's the optimization problem underlying the problem. How do you go about predicting the incident, the trans instance, you know, in this particular place, in this particular time, so that you can place the resource in the, in the right time, the right place, and hence the uh, quality of service can be guaranteed. So um, as I say, the um, database is pretty big. Uh, with, you know, Singapore is a pretty safe place, so um, 
we got a couple of years uh, of incident reports with uh, half, half a million reported incidents um, from emergency phone calls, from police reports, etc. Um, each of them has a lot of features, uh, spatial temporal features, as well as the response tactics and a lot of stuff that um, I can't even uh, publicly say. Um, and the metadata containing the police neighborhood, the boundary neighborhood, the sector boundaries and police de de deployment, where they go around uh, patrolling and deploying those uh, resources. And uh, I was able to use uh, the, same, the same techniques of Gaussian processes with uh, Kerner um, and features that capture the similarity uh, of uh, certain neighborhood boundaries and certain um, space and time features uh, also you know, whether it's weekend or weekday, and also discretize the time scale, and also count down of incidents in each, uh, in each spatial temporal bin, I was able to predict um, uh, in pretty much, you know, like, given this bin, can you predict the neighboring bins, and you can, can you predict, you know, ahead of time, so that the resources can be planned in advance. Um, and we did comparison. And um, we was able to uh, come up with pretty competitive models uh, compared with the other um, state-of-the-art models, uh, and was able to show to show that our models can realistically capture the distribution of uh, the number of instances in certain neighborhoods, and it was um, it was enough for the police force to uh, to do the resource planning. So that's uh, that's the problem. So um, basically, in a nutshell. So um, yeah, I just want to introduce the problem on a very, very superficial, in a very superficial way because I can't really, really go deep in this because due to um, time constraint. But there are certain um, takeaways that I would like uh, you to have uh, after this talk. So it's urban computing takeaways. So what, what is urban computing about? So it is about 3M. So it's about big data and big data, uh, big challenges in big cities. So solving big challenges using big data in big cities. Um, it is about data management. Um, so how do you go about fusing cross-domain data, craft data, social network data, online and offline human behavior, as well as the you know, trajectories, what they do in the real world with, against what they do in online world. About data mining, how do you get insights for the data? How do you group people and clusters people, and how do you learn and predict a, the pattern of behavior? So it's about machine learning. And it's a win-win-win solution. So it's win for the people, for the city, and for the environment. If you put these three together, it's three BMW. So that's the takeaway. Thank you very much. Questions, please. Have you, have you thought about bringing together your two areas of research to basically put all these petrol, petrol cars up there? They Yes, exactly. Uh, that's actually part of the uh, that's part of work that I did not mention. So, uh, so how 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 do you go about predicting the instance, and how do you go about predicting the response time? So, given the traffic uh, the traffic condition, can you optimize for the uh, response time? You can you know give a prediction of the travel time for the police cars. So that 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 was also part of the research that I did not mention. Yeah, so actually, you know, one, one, one leads to another. Other questions, please? Yep, a uh, question about the brain that was done by Alibaba. Have any other opinions on the projectors? Could you speak a little bit can, can you repeat again? All right, um, City Brain by Alibaba. Oh, OK. Yeah. They are doing something that is really similar in large scale cities. Okay. So, what is the opinion of those? To be honest, I uh, I'm not aware of the city brain from Alibaba, but I know there are a lot of uh, things doing uh, this, and 
as I probably have mentioned, the uh, pioneering group is Microsoft Research Asia in Beijing, who um, proposed the whole problem and the whole framework and who did uh, a lot of research work on cross-domain data fusion, trajectory prediction, and all the sub-problems in urban computing. Yeah, but I don't know much about Alibaba. I have a couple questions for you. Oh, okay. Um, so the big challenges you put forward, which one do you think you might be perhaps the simplest to solve? And secondly, which one do you think would have the biggest impact? Uh, can you uh, repeat the first question, please? Um, uh, of, of the problems, of uh, the yes. challenges, which one do you think is the easiest, if you, if you have to guess? Right. Uh, Really, there's no problem that's easiest. So they're all interlinked, so one leads to another. I mean, if you think of the urban system as a complex system, so everything is interrelated. And I mean, there's nothing that's really, uh, as, as I say, the problem law enforcement uh, calls for the problem of your deployment. How do you deploy response time given the traffic conditions? And also, maybe incidents can affect the traffic conditions. So, if you have like you know crime incidents or whatever incidents that might disrupt the traffic, so it's, everything is an organic complex system. So, first of all, I don't think anything is simpler than any, anything else. Yeah. And what's the second Absolutely. question? Which, one is, uh, which other problems? Do you Um, right. Um, I well, I don't know whether it's positive or negative impact. But what I'm imagining is that, from my knowledge, I have been reading uh, or researching on this uh, particular problem. Uh, a lot of efforts have been put in linking online and offline social behavior. So how do you, given, you know, say like your phone records your offline world behaviors, where you go at what time, and you know, you have your social, online social network friends, how, how do you identify, pinpoint individual, and merge these two offline trajectories with online behavior social networks? So that's a lot of work going on, particularly, uh, particularly in China that I'm aware of. So that's, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly, it, it, you know, it, so it's, there are people who have the power to know too much about you. So there's a lot of concerns and problems about privacy, uh, first of all. And um, so certainly there's a lot of impact when it comes to, to collecting massive data and knowing too much about uh, individual citizens at any level. So that's a huge concern. So I think, um, but actively, I mean, that's really, that's some, something that's actively going on in this particular urban computing uh, domain research. Yeah. One more question. With your crime prediction, what was the response from law enforcement? Did you work with them at all in terms of using the results from the research? Right. Um, so the response that they are um, adopting the uh, the model, and I mean, it probably takes years to calibrate uh, its impact on law enforcement. But there's growing concern of how do you optimize for the resource given this growing trend of population and stuff. You know, how do you guarantee this? Alpha fraction of incidents cannot be responded in 15 minutes time. So that's the original uh, question. But you know, uh, for 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 the impact to be calibrated, it has probably has to take years to know whether that uh, quality of service can be maintained. Yes, uh, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Right. Not only uh, the, the you know the population and uh, uh, infrastructure evolves, but the types, the nature of crimes, the incidents also evolve. So, so that has to be taken into account in in the model. So it's not only the number of the number of uh, incidents, but also the type of incidents and how that evolves. Yeah, definitely. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think there's a question over there. Thank you so much.
Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So next up we have uh, uh, Victor Schwartz. Yeah. Uh, Victor, you want to 